What are the most horrible fights you see? You see in families, you see in your neighbors. What are the most horrible fights you see going on out there in the world? I would suggest there's fights over inheritance. Family fights, aren't they, about inheritance? We probably all know someone, some family somewhere, where there's a fight going on about inheritance if they let you in on that. Who gets what? Somebody always seems to be not getting his or her fair share. These fights are horrible. We've all seen it. A good friend of mine just called last week and said, Father Gary, I need you to pray really hard. My sister and I are going to court over mom's estate. It's not very rare, really. This guy comes up to Jesus in the gospel, and he demands his attention, and he wants an answer. Jesus, tell my brother to give me my share of our inheritance. And Jesus looks at him and says, why are you bugging me about this? <laughs> I am not a judge. We have judges. I am not that judge. That's not my job. Different pay grade. <laughs> There's another reason Jesus resisted answering it. He resisted answering it because he knew no matter what he would say, the real problem would remain. The real problem would remain. If he answers this question, the real problem will still be there in this man and will always be there for him. The reason Jesus doesn't go there is that problem, the question he asked, was not the real problem. They are fighting over the inheritance for one reason and one reason only, greed. Greed. What's going on in the world, Jesus has, his answer is, if we're listening, if we're not hardening our hearts, as we just sang in the responsorial psalm, if we're not hardening our hearts, Jesus is suggesting to us greed. Greed is what's going on in the world. Those are the meanest and ugliest of divisions. And greed divides up families and neighborhoods and people at work and breaks down, divides up our own hearts. Ugly indeed. The church, it seems to me, always manages to make everything about sex. <laughs> sex is our biggest problem. The problem with young people is sex. We're doing this or we're not doing that. And the church, and parents actually, seem to always be wringing their hands over sex. Sex is not going to bring down the world, my friends. What will bring down the world? What is bringing down the world is greed. Greed is doing us in. Sad to say, that's America today. These two mass murders in 24 hours, three in one week, three mass murders in one week, 250 in this year so far, and it's only August, 250 mass murders in the United States. And I would suggest to you, when you look deep inside of what's going on underneath, what's underneath, what's underneath, twisted for sure by mental illness and a million other things, what you'll see there is greed, fear of losing what we have, plain old greed. And there are so many faces of greed. Jesus begins in this gospel by pointing out our things the things we have, our possessions. How about all those things that we accumulate, that we still want, that occupy our attention, so much of our attention? How about the thrill you and I get when we buy something new or we get a deal? How about how many hours, hours and hours of our 
already relatively brief lives. And I mean, we don't live really that long, even the oldest among us. How many hours and hours of our brief life do we spend taking care of our things, stolen then from our life, and doing things that would matter maybe a whole lot more than what we're attending to and worried about? How many of our precious hours have gone to, to that kind of stuff in our lives? How about how anxious and worried we've become for seven hours, just two days ago, seven hours, I lost my iPhone. Ugh. The preacher needs to practice what he preaches. For seven hours, I lived in anxiety. I couldn't get any text. If somebody wanted to get a hold of me, how would I respond? What about the people that were waiting for a response? Will they check their emails? How do I get back to the CSC to write my emails? It was awful, awful. This morning I got a text saying, hey, do you have an extra iPhone? My son broke his. Well, that's what I was sending out Friday. <laughs> do you have an extra iPhone? <laughs> it's, it's crazy how dependent sometimes we get on things. Things, 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 things. How about the, the rush we get? There's so many faces of, of greed, really, my friends. How about the rush we get from all those likes? You know, the rush, the number of friends we have on our accounts now, our Facebook, our contact list. How about that as another form of greed, accumulating friends, popularity, making it all about popularity? How about our hoarding, hoarding? If you think hoarding sounds a lot like hoarding, you're not far from the truth. How about what we've done to the environment? First thing I heard when I woke up this morning was how San Diego is trying to get people to prepare for a 10-foot rise, what could be up to a 10-foot rise in sea level in the next couple of decades. And they're already saying maybe we should talk about moving houses back from the sea. How about what we've done to the environment because we need it, we want it, we gotta have this. Now, in our day, in our generation, Greedy from the next generation, the next. Have we, has greed done a number also on our environment? <coughs> hoarding sounds a lot like whoring. My friends, do you see what Jesus wants for us? He wants us to be free. He wants us to know we, we are so much more than our things. We are so much more than our wealth. We are so much more than our successes. We are so much more than our popularity, the, all those likes. We're so much more than that stuff. We're so much more than who likes us and who doesn't. So much more. Jesus sees what we don't about ourselves, that we're all being possessed by our possessions. And Jesus reminds us that it's so easy for our possessions to possess us. That's why he says to us today, in almost a kind way, take care to guard against all greed. Take care. It's like he's saying, pay attention. Don't condemn yourself for it. Don't get down on yourself when you walk out of here today because his word was kind of confrontative. He's so kind about this. Please, for your sake, he's saying, take care to guard against all greed. Pay attention. To how greedy you are. Your life does not consist of your possessions. You're so much more than that house you spend so much time worrying about and cleaning. You're so much more than that. Do you see yourself as greedy? If you ask me, greed is a lot like being a bad driver. We always think it's the other guy who's the bad driver. Everyone else is always greedy, not me. That's my brother. That's my sister who's greedy. That's my neighbor who's greedy. And that might be true. But let's not forget about ourselves. Please consider this. Have you ever had your heart racing over what someone thought about you? 
Have you ever found yourself beating yourself up for saying something that was rude, that could or might have hurt someone, maybe made them really mad at you, or you're worried they're mad at you? And so you go through all sorts of fear and drama because you don't want to lose a friend or feel on the outs with anybody. That fear around a relationship, that fear around a bank account, that fear about the sta Dow Jones average or whatever they call it, that fear about someone breaking something that's valuable to you. How many times did my little nephew get too close to something I prized? And it's like, ah, it's like, all of a sudden, I'm mad. And he didn't even do anything yet. <laughs> What's that about in us? It's all forms, my friends, of our possessions possessing. Our possessions possessing us. We're all greedy. We got to know that. We're all greedy. We've got to admit that. And we've got to be on our guard about that in us and when it might be bubbling up to the surface spontaneously unprepared. There's something of the greedy in all of us and sometimes we act on it at the cost of deep friendships and family relationships. Sometimes we act on that greed and it's making us really ugly and it's putting the peace of the earth and the people on the earth in jeopardy. Each of those thousands of faces of greed are ugly The epitome of greed is illustrated, as you and I know, by an old character called Ebenezer Scrooge in Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Listen how he describes the face of greed. The cold within him froze his old features, nipped his pointed nose, made his eyes red, his thin lips blue, and he spoke out shrewdly in his grating voice. Ugly. Jesus, in today's readings, all three of them really, Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. You work hard for what you get, only to leave it to the next generation, to somebody who doesn't have to work for what they got. Vanity of vanities, the first reading tells us. And Paul, I think it was Paul, calls greed idolatry, a false god. Jesus in these readings has shown us a way out of this, a way to look beautiful again, to change our countenance, our features, from the features and the expressions of greediness to beautiful. And he's saying it's about focus. It's where you put your attention. What are you looking at? Did you spend half the amount of time not, that you spent writing checks and making sure you have security in all your deposits and you're not going over this or that and all that kind of stuff? Do you spend half your time focusing more on that than on the people around you who love you and whom you love? You won't get those hours back. And for sure, life demands that we attend to the details of life. And sometimes I resent that, frankly. But the truth is, and, and the truth is we have to attend to those needs to live in a real world at the same time. Where's our focus, Jesus is saying. What are you focused on? Instead of focusing on things that pass away, focus on the eternal things that don't pass away. The things of God, he's saying. Things of the kingdom of God. The things that last, not pass away. The things you can take with you versus the things you can't take with you. Like compassion generosity, forgiveness, love. If you change your focus, you find out how rich you are. Those are his words. You're so rich from the day you were born, before you had anything. You were so rich.
according to Jesus. And I think it would do us well to listen to him according to this great teacher. Greed is the root of every evil. And he wants us to root it out. Now. Before it makes us more miserable than we already are.